Amen, amen, amen. Let us go into prayer, you guys. And Lord, we thank you for this, this time in this presence once again with your people together, gathered in your name, gathered to speak unto you and talk to you, Father. Whatever it is we need from you, it is good, and whatever you do is good for your people, and it's amazing for your people. Thank you for looking out for us, God. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for showing us the way, the truth, and the life. And you say, no man can come unto the Father except through you. So we coming through you, speaking of your son, Jesus, the one that died on Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for doing all that you've done. And God, we bless your name right now. Have your way. Speak and say what you want to say. Everything is good for your people. For your word is the truth, and it cannot lie. We give you honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, turn to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus. The book of Exodus. The third chapter. The book of Exodus, the third chapter. book of Exodus, third chapter, starting at the first verse. The book of Exodus, and our main scripture will be coming from Exodus 3 and 5, so we will read from Exodus 1, Exodus 3 and 1 through the 3 and 1 through 5. And the Bible says, Exodus. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert, and he came to the mountain of God, even to Haran. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and he behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will not turn aside and see this great sight, while the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And this is our main verse where Moses, where the Lord talked to Moses. And he said, and he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon you stand is, is holy ground. <laughs> Glory to God. May we have a blessing to God's holy word. Tonight we're going to talk about put off thy shoes. <laughs> put off thy shoes. Mm, my God, my God. It comes a time that we'll have a relationship with God. And the Lord has a task at hand. And he has something for his people to do. And he has an assignment for his people to do. Every one of us that are in this house, wherever we are, and we're still in the land of the living, God has something still for you to do. And it's up to us when he calls on our name. And as always said, you see, and he called Moses in this verse. 
He called on him in verse 4. He said, Moses, Moses, God knows your name. God knows who you are. That's why he calls your name. And normally when God calls your name, he has something for you to do or something for you to hear and heed to. That's the God we serve. Put off thy shoes. In other words, God is saying, understand who you talking to. <laughs> Moses is here that has an encounter with God. And Moses, just like any one of us, human, think about it. There's a burning bush, but the bush is not burning. Think about this, people of God. If you put fire to a bush that is dry, that whole bush going to burn. I don't know about no bush <laughs> that you put a fire to that it will not burn. But when you're in the presence, oh God, show that my shit. It's something about being in the presence of God. Where things that seem likely are not likely. <laughs> and, and, and put off thy shoes. This is very uh, important for us to understand. When I'm saying put off thy shoes, we as people of God need to reverence God for who he is. Watch, this is what I'm saying. Moses is here on this mountain, Mount Horel, and he is seeing and experiencing something with God that he's never experienced before. So us being people of God, there's going to be a time where we're going to experience something where God is trying to take us somewhere. And we got to be very keen on who we are and what he wants us to do because when God talks, you know, this used to have this, this, this lawyer. I, I, don't, I don't even know if he even a lawyer anymore. It used to have this commercial that say, when E.F. Hutton talks, everybody listen. But when God talks, we all should listen. Because he's trying to tell us something. We got to realize who we're talking to and who we are. This God that we, that called our name. Now, if God called my name, I'm like, Lord, <laughs> anytime I hear the word, or God is telling me, Errol, he done told me before. I, I, it done been times where I don't even, I'm so tired. And God say, read my word, Errol. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> I'm so tired. But I got to do what God tell me to do, right? Because I got to reverence who I'm really talking to. I'm not just talking to my sister Sharon or my sister Petrina or my sister Miss Thomasina. I get, see, I see both of them and I, I know they're twins, right? So, <laughs> so I say, I, I, I say Thomas or Thomasina. <laughs> But when we're talking and we're in a relationship with God, we didn't need to know that God is trying to get us somewhere and we need to respect who we're talking to. Folks don't even know who God is. They say they got a relationship, but they really don't respect who God is. But God is telling Moses, put some respect <laughs> on my name. <laughs> This is who people don't realize. They, we walk in this life and we, we do everything in this life as God wants us to do it. He gives us our steps. He gives us our order. But what does God want out of our lives? What does he want us to do? Watch this. Um, a call to Moses to give him a definite commission and a mission. God is going to give you a definite
commission and a mission. Your goal in this life, you have a mission for God to do his will. Now, if you don't do his will, well, you got to answer to God when you leave here. But you got a mission and a commission with God. A token of respect and submission. We ought to approach God with a solemn pause. Lord have mercy. This ain't just no average man or no average thing we're seeing. We need to know that who we talking to trying to get us something, oh God, that can probably bless you, your family, your family, family, your children, children. Do you realize who you talking to? This is what God is trying to show us in his message. We got to pause and get ready for preparation. When God calls on you and calls your name, get ready. Because something is about to happen. And, and, and we can't rely on a man. We got to rely on what God has told us and what God has told us to do. See, 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 because he didn't call for me, he called for Patrina. He, if, he ain't going to call Patrina's name <laughs> if he, for me. He ain't going to call somebody else's name for me. He's going to call me by name because he knows me by name. So he wants you to do what it is he wants you to do, but we got to be at his feet, Lord Jesus. Hey, Sholabasha. Yay, God, hallelujah. Some people, you, you, the people of God, we got to be at God's feet at all times, especially in the time we're in right now. It's an evil world out here. Evil. I, I, but the Bible said that it will happen. Jesus said these things must come. But here's the thing about it. God said when, you, when, you have, when I have them in my arm, then they, they are under my wing. You can't pluck them out. You can't touch them. That's why we have a relationship with him because God's saying, I got you. I just need you to do what I told you to do. Lord, have mercy. But you got to hear him, have a relationship with him, and hear what he's trying to tell you. Because sometimes, you know, I messed up a couple of times when God had told me, do something, and I didn't do it. Man, it, ain't, it don't feel good. When you don't adhere to what God is telling you to do, and you do it your own way. But I'm so glad we got a God that even when we mess up, Lord have mercy, he still loves us. Still give us another chance. Why? Because we're still in the land of the living to get it right. Now, watch this. Go to the book of, watch this. Go to the book of Ruth. Remember when God calls your name, it's because of his manifestation and the preparation of his divine presence to where he's trying to get you when he calls on you. Ruth, the uh, fourth chapter. Watch this. It's, a lot of people don't go to Ruth a lot, but we go on today because watch what God say here. Ruth 4 and 7. God, it, this is me showing you what's going on in this particular text, how God is, is doing things, right? Look what it says in Ruth 4 and 7. Now, this was the manner in the former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing for confirm all things, a man plucked off his what? His shoes and gave it to his what? His neighbor. And this was a testimony what? In, in Israel. So when God was telling him to put off your shoes, this was a custom of what they did in Israel, right? Why would God reverence that? I'm glad you asked. Don't you know that he know God knows the word because he put the word here? 
So he had to show them something familiar on what they already customarily do so he can show them, like, I respect your customs, but understand who you talking to. See, sometimes we can get so caught up in our customs <laughs> and miss God. I call that tradition. We can get so caught up in a traditional thing that we, I've been doing it this way, I've been doing it this whole time. But the moment God come in, you ain't going to move because you stuck in your tradition. Makes a lot of folks miss God because they can hear him, but don't want to do what he tell them to do because they already said, move, and you say, no, nah, I'm staying here because I'm okay right here. Don't you know that God can be trying to tell you to move so he can bring you to a higher height and give you more things and bless you more, but you're okay with what you got? Lord, have mercy. Go to Joshua 5 and 15. Watch this. Again, scriptures here. Joshua, the book of Joshua. That's right before Deuteronomy, right after Deuteronomy. Joshua 5 and 15. Joshua 5 and 15. I'm showing y'all customs. What was customary? Why would God reference something that they did? And I'm showing y'all what they did. I want to give you some word on that. Some understanding, some background, what they did. And the captain, it said, Joshua 5 and 15, and the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, what did he say? Lose thy what? Shoes from off thy what? For the place where thou stand is what? Oh, wait a minute. Doesn't that sound like something you just heard? Really? And Joshua did what? What? Let me tell you something. When you're in the presence of God, just do what he say. Lord, I don't, I, see, if you've ever been in the presence of God, and if you ever, Lord, have mercy, when you get, I call it being in the zone. Lord, you don't want to come out. Lord, have mercy. If you ever been into the holy of the holy, where I'm talking about where you in your, I call, we call it our prayer closet, right? And it's just you. And God, I don't have to have a problem to get in with God. Hallelujah. A problem does not have to have me make me run to God because I got a problem. Now I want to get in with him. I'm going to have a relationship, get in with him, good or bad. Ain't nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. Ooh, if people can understand that. Watch this. It is not that this ground was just holy in that spot, right? But it was an account of the presence of God at that time. So it wasn't just that the ground was holy. It was an account that God was there, and wherever God is, there's holiness. Lord, have mercy. Hebrews 12 and 29. We're about to run to some scriptures. Hebrews 12 and 29. On all I getting, get knowledge and understanding. Those understandings come from the Lord. Hebrews 12 and 29. We're going to run through this. Look what this say. Respect who you're talking to. Put off thy shoes. And look what it says. I'm going to start at 27. Hebrews 12 and 27. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of things that are shaken. As the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken, that they may remain. Wherefore, we receiving us, people of God, a kingdom which cannot be what? Move. Look what this Bible says. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with what? 
reverence and godly what? And look what it says. We got to serve God with fear. If we, if our every move is to serve God with fear, that means every move we make, we're going to think about God first before we make that move. Lord, have mercy. We fear God that much that I don't want to miss God. That's reverencing God. Knowing who you're talking to. Knowing who you're praying to. Knowing who's in your presence. For our God is a what? A consuming what? This God that we talk about, <laughs> Jesus, has brought me out of my darkness, oh God, and brought me into this light today. So you mean to tell me I don't want to be in the presence of this God? Wait a minute. None of us, none of us, Woke ourselves up this morning, Lord have mercy. And it wasn't just by our strength that we're here today, <laughs> but it was because of God that we're here today. Know who you're referencing to. We are reverent God. We are referencing to who we talking to. We talking to a God, Lord have mercy. People do, some people don't feel God. That's why they do what they do. Man, listen. You know how, I'll, I'll put this for example. I know ain't nobody going through no relationship problems in here. I'm just saying. I'm just making this an example. Say, me and my wife. We, 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 we done got into a, 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 not an argument, to where we don't agree on something. We on a disagreement, right? Well, if she don't want Ben, and I don't want Ben, <laughs> we gonna have a problem in the steel mate, right? Watch this. Oh, Jesus. But if, if, if we can come together, watch this. Hey, and, 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 and doesn't matter if we, did, some people say we, we, we disagree to disagree <laughs> because no matter what, we still going to love each other no matter what, right? You got to fear everything that I don't want to lose this person or this person don't want to lose me because of a small disagreement, Okay. So if we got this type of God that's given us everything, life, breath, everything, but we still don't even want to reverence who he is. A lot of folks forget about who God really is. They don't fear God. That's why they walk around and they say, I'm just do me. <laughs> I'm going to do everything I want to do. It's good if you're doing it in great, you know, in standing what God say. Enjoy your life. God want us. Let me say this, people of God. Because some people think that Christians have a boring life. That's a lie. <laughs> I enjoy my life. <laughs> Listen, just because people got situations and problems doesn't mean that they don't enjoy their life. The Bible says you're going to go through something. It don't matter. He said you're going to be tried by fire. You go, everybody, I don't care if you're a child of God or you're not, but it's best to be a child of God because God got you. When y'all dead, Satan going to kill you. That's the difference. But we ought to reverence and fear God at all times. I don't want to move unless God tell me to move. This is what this scripture talking about. Watch this. Go to John 8 and 12. Yeah, we won't be long. John 8 and 12. Put off your shoes. Know who you talking to. We don't play, we don't have no Mickey Mouse God. We, the God, the, 
everything that we don't been through, who you think brought us out of that? Huh? Sometimes we forget who, who, who this type of God we serve. If we didn't, Lord have mercy, I know without a shadow of doubt, ain't nobody in here would have made, made it to what they'd have made it to already if it wasn't for God. Nobody. There ain't a person, Lord, even Lord have mercy, I got to say it, even the sinners ought to be thanking God because they're still living to get their life right. You kidding me? We ought to be grateful and thankful for the type of God we serve. Think about this. Lord have mercy. All this dirty stuff I did back then, oh wretched that I was, the Bible say, oh wretched man that I, I was, that Paul was saying, I, I know how bad I was in the world because I, I ain't care what nobody thought about me or I ain't do nobody wrong. But I've done some sinful things. You better believe that. And this type of God, and then everybody have been here. There ain't nobody, if you do, raise your hand, Jesus must be you. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you something. If a fly could talk, Lord have mercy, we all, Lord have mercy, wouldn't want people to know what we done been through and done done. Trust me. And we got a God who will not put all your business out there and still love you and still save you and still take care of you, but you still can't fear him or reverence him? Lord, have mercy. God is only saying, just give me mine. What I am do, all I want you to do is love me and serve me. Watch this, y'all. John 8. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Look at this. He that follows me shall not walk in what? Darkness, but shall have the what? The light, that's John 8 and 12. John 8 and 12. Je this said, then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me should not walk in darkness, but should have the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. They should have the light what? What of life? They, everybody who had a relationship with God or know who God is, their light should shine. Look what Jesus say. I am the light of the world. He that follow me shall not do what? Walk in what? What? You mean to walk in this darkness? Now, I was out here doing all this, but God saved me, and God said, turn from that wicked ways and turn unto me. Now, everybody, this, this see, because I don't want to miss some people, because some people miss this. I had to make a choice, and that choice was either, I, Lord, have mercy, in the same message I'm talking about today. <laughs> When God calls on you, what you going to do? I had to make a choice. Do I want to stick with the world? Or do I want to stick with God? Do I want to walk into the light? Or do I want to walk into this darkness? Right? The Bible said, <laughs> the light comprehends darkness. And he said, he can't, man, God, you can't have God and mamma. You can't serve two masters. A lot of folks don't like to hear that. I hate to say it like this, but it's the word. The word said, you can't save two, serve two masters. You're going to either love the one or hate the other. And you can't be in the middle, he said, because you're lukewarm. He said, I spew you out. So we got to find the side we own. And what type of God we serve. Listen. If you got a relationship with God, you should already know what type of God you serve. Lord, help. Ain't nobody, Lord Jesus. <laughs> there are testimonies in this church from so many people. The stuff we done been through, some people should have been dead. And who you think got you out of that? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
and we can't, we can't give him his due, and we can't reverence who he is, put your shoes off, know who you talking to. He said, they can't follow me. They should not walk in darkness. He said, but shall have the light of what? Light. You should have Jesus in you, and people should see that Jesus in you. I, I, I keep saying that. This is what God wants. But look at this. Go to John. Ooh, see, you know, <laughs> let me stay here. Because this here particular scriptures going to show you the difference between who know God and who don't know God. Watch this. Verse 13 said, The Pharisees therefore said unto him, <laughs> Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. You man, you know, see, he don't know who he's talking to. See, him? see, when you don't know who you're talking to, you're going to talk crazy. I call that craziness. If, whoa, that's why we're talking about Moses on the mountain, right? Jesus answered and said unto him in verse 14, Lord Jesus. How many know Jesus got an answer for everything? <laughs> you, you hear me? <laughs> you ain't going to pull it over on Jesus. He, he knows everything. Listen, this is, how, this is how crazy it is where people don't know how type, what type of God we really, really serve. God said, I know all the hairs on your head. You can cut it off, I still can count them. You hear me? D ain't no other God can do. I'm just telling you what type of, it's above what we thinking about, who we serving. That's what I'm trying to get to you. He says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Thou, thou I bre though I bear record of myself, Yet my record is what? True. For I know whence I came and whether I go. But look what he tell him. <laughs> Jesus. But you cannot tell whence I come or whither I go. Ye judge after the what? I judge what? See, you, you judge me for what I look like, Lord Jesus. For what I have, Jesus. For what I do, Watch this. Whew. I'm about to bless y'all with this. Because, you know, folks look at you for what you got. <laughs> if you ain't got what other people got, <laughs> then you consider not in that group, right? <laughs> See, people will place you in a group if you let them place you in a group. Oh, you got to be on this side because this side got money. <laughs> oh, you got to be on this side because this side got this. God say, there's neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek. He says, everybody are equal. Oh, my God. The world will divide you and tell you who you are and judge you by what you got. Look, I've always said this. I don't care what nobody think about me. If I walk in here with a croaker sack and a cap, you hear what I'm talking about? I'm still the same arrow if I got it or I don't have it. You hear what I'm saying? We serve the same God if I got money or I don't have money. I'm not different than nobody else. I might have less, but I got a big God. Hallelujah. This, Lord have mercy, this the type of God we serve, right? Folks, don't get caught up. This is why a lot of youngsters, Lord, thank you for... This is why a lot of youngsters are committing suicide. Because they, they can't live up to what they see. You hear what I'm saying? So they figure that I should be where they're at, but I'm not. Well, I should be doing what they're doing, but I'm not. But that ain't for you. Maybe God got something else for you. So because I don't have what anybody else has, 
I, I feel that I'm not better than nobody, so let me take my life. That's Satan talking to you. God said, I come to give you life, and I come to give you life more abundantly. It ain't about stuff. Stuff does not get you into heaven. Lord, have mercy. If that was true, a lot of billionaires would go to heaven because they got it. But I promise you, they got a lot of billionaires in hell. And they got, probably got a lot of them in heaven. We don't know. Jesus said, I don't judge people by their flesh. I judge them by who they are. Do you have that light in you? People going to know. John uh, 1, you're right there. Go to John, the first chapter. John 1 and 9. Woo, we serve a good God. Woo, Jesus. I, ooh, I don't know if I won't go there. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I got to say what God tell me, though. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> John 1 and 9, he says, That was the true light, which light is every man that cometh into this world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. The Bible says he came unto his own, and his own did what? Now, why won't, why won't you receive something that got everything for you? You know, think about it this way. We all been through relationships in our life. When it had a knucklehead in our life and when it had a great person in our life. And that knucklehead we remember because they've done knuckleheaded things. And a good person, we know them. Because they've done great things, right? So normally, you go for the one who's doing great things for you instead of the knucklehead. But sometimes, <laughs> Lord, let me say it like this. Sometimes some people want the knuckleheads. They, they want the knucklehead who's going to beat them upside their head, who's going to treat them wrong, and say they love me. If that love, you can keep it. And then we wonder why. Well, why? Why you don't love me? They're showing you. <laughs> and you still want this knucklehead. But here's the thing. They can change or they don't change. But somebody got to change because the situation ain't going to change to somebody. Cuts it off. There come a point in life to where what do you want in life? You going to cut it off? Follow God? Trust God? Listen to the Lord? You know, a lot of people say, you, you talk about this Jesus, Jesus, God, God, Lord, Lord, all this stuff. But I, I need more. Well, hey, well you, you got to find out who Jesus is first. You got to get a relationship with him first. Because some folk be like, well, that ain't cut out for me. Well, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> uh, it, it worked great for us. We know who God is. We know what type of God we serve. That's why we reverence him. Because we got a relationship with it. That's why he call us by name. But if you don't have a, Lord have mercy. You got to have a relationship with God to find out what you need to do in this life. Look what he said in verse 12. But as many as received him, look what God did to them. To them gave he what? To become what? Even to them that what? Well, you mean to tell me that this type of God that I'm talking about, and I'm going back to that in Exodus, the same God that I'm talking about, say, put off your shoes, acknowledge me, know who I am, and he's telling you, 
I'm going to give you power <laughs> to become the son of God. That means the children, woman, man, doesn't matter. We all in that number. To them that believe on his name. You got to believe in God. You, 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 you just can't say, I know God and don't, and don't believe what he's going to do. That's the type of God we serve, right? Look at this. Go to Matthew 22 and 32. Lord, Lord, telling me, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to have to get there. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to get there. Lord, I'm going to get there. <laughs> Look what he said in verse 32, Matthew 22 and 32. I am God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the what? But of the what? Let the dead, Bible say, bury the dead. God said, I, I'm here for the ones that are living. We love our loved ones that passed away. But God is telling you right here, you need to reverence, reverence me while I'm here, while you're here. Not when you're there because you can't do it then. It's too late. Run into some scriptures. Matthew 6 and 28. You're right there. Matthew 6 and 28. God said, I want to do all this I want to do for you. And, and, and because I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to his presence so you can understand why you're in his presence. But I want to show you what happens you know, you know, when you come out of the presence of God, when God wants you to do what he wants you to do, but you have to be there. You got to be ready. Watch, so he can call your name right there. Look what he said, verse Matthew 6 and 28. And why take you thought for the raiment? Pastor Chris preached this a lot. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They tall not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto them that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Look what it say. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow it cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Oh, ye have little what? You mean to tell me God can, can, God can stick? Look, birds are living. Who taking care of them? The lilies in the, in the, he's telling you right now, who take care of that? And y'all worrying about who God, when God going to do what he going to do or if he going to do it? God said, I already got that taken care of. Why worry about this or that? that look what he said. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or whither shall we be clothed? For after all these things do Gentiles, oh Jesus, they seek these things. For your heavenly Father does what? Knows what? That you have need of what? Yeah, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me God knows what you're lacking in? You mean to tell me God knows what he needs to get to you? So why are we worried? Why are we losing sleep? Why, like, like Pastor Chris say, I sleep good. My wife got to wake me up. <laughs> you got to say, say, look, boy. <laughs> That's what she do to me. Wake up. It's snoring too much. I sleep good. You hear what I'm saying? I, I, I Look, God said, I got, look what he said right here. He had, that you have need of all things. Not something, he said, everything. God said, I know what you need, all that you need. I'm going to supply it for you. That's the type of God we serve. Go back to Exodus in our main scripture, Exodus uh, 3. And 14. Now, God had already told Moses, 
I'm going to read down, you guys, so you guys can see it, and I'm going to close on that. I'm going to start at that fifth verse, Exodus 3 and 5. And he said, Draw nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where thou standest is what? Holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of the Father of God of Abraham. I just read you that. The God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon what? Know who you talking to. Lord, have mercy. Abraham said, oh, Lord, this, the God that I know, that I've been praying for, the one that's been doing all these things. And look what the Lord said. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. I have heard their cry by the reason of their taskmaster, for I know their so God knows your problems. He knows what you're going through. Stop worrying. <laughs> Look at what God is telling you. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto good land of the large and unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevitites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression. God said, I already seen what they were going through. People oppressing you. People trying to make you feel bad. He said, I see what's going on. People were oppressed. But guess what? <laughs> they asked for that oppression. Because there was, they, they, God tell them do something. They did the opposite. And expect God to bless them. But he's saying, you know what? This is the type of God we serve though. If we mess up, we can get it right. Because he said, when they went through what they were going through, they cried out. You heard what he said? And I heard their voice. Abraham, I heard them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, and thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I, Lord Jesus? You know, sometimes we say that ourselves. <laughs> Lord, little old me. <laughs> Come on now, Lord. Don't you know that God knows who you is? He, he already sent you here. He did not send you here to leave you. He did not send you here to not be prosperous. He did not send you here to not just enjoy life. He sent you here on a mission, right? But to enjoy it while you're here. And he, said, and he said, Moses said unto God, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, certainly I will be with thee. God, look what God's telling y'all. I'll be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. Then thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon what? This mountain. And Moses said unto God, behold, behold when I come unto the children of Israel, and I say unto them, God the Father has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, what is his name? Y'all, this is the scripture I want to show you. Lord, have, know who you talking to. <laughs> Put your shoes off, Lord, have mercy. And get ready to know who you talking to. And when you in the presence of God, Lord, have mercy. Watch this. And Moses said unto God, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and I say unto them, the God of your father has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? Look what God say. And God said unto Moses, <laughs> I am that I am. <laughs> ain't got to be nothing else. I ain't got to tell you nothing else that settles it. That's who I am. That's what I say. Don't say nothing else. Just tell them God said it. And that I am who I am. So who is God to you? Lord, have mercy. To this day, at this hour, at this second, who is God to you? 
You got to know him. You got to have that relationship. You got to have that encounter with God. Watch this. Uh, uh, I'm trying to go to this. All right. Go to Galatians 3. I want to show you something. This, uh, this wouldn't even be my message, but I got to go here. And I'm closing on this. We're in a world where a lot of people hate people. We're in a world where there's no love. I want y'all to see this because the life we in and the life and this world we're in, there's so much hatred, there's so much strife, there's so much envy, and there's so much division. I want you to see what God is saying so you can realize who you're talking to and what he's saying. Because we as Christians, we got to live this life the way God say we need to live this life. And we got to be the light that Jesus was talking about. He say, it, it, those that don't follow me, they walk in darkness. They don't walk in the light. But look what God is saying here. Watch. I want to show you that it doesn't matter who you are. He say in verse 27, I'll start with 27. For as many of you as been baptized into Christ have put on what? Christ. So you've been baptized with Christ. You have put on Christ, right? So you should act Christ-like, right? So if you should act Christ-like, right, look at this. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither born nor free. That neither male or female. Look what he say. For you all are what? There is no division in this Bible. Do you see that? I want people to see that. It's in the Word. So why is racism running so rampant in this world? Because I'm black, I'm different. Because I'm white, I'm different. Not in this Bible. Where is that in the Bible? Did y'all see that? I, I, I just read that God said it don't matter. You're male or you're female, black or white. We got to check ourselves and we're a child of God. You're going to love everybody. I don't care what color you are. You can be green. We still got to love you. That's the problem is they don't know who God is. They don't read this word because if they go right here to Galatians 3 and 28, your life will change forever. You can't have hate in your heart and still say, I love God. And here we got people, believe it or not, there are people in this pulpit around this world don't even read this scripture because it's going to put them off the map. They got to change their ways and they change their thoughts. Because if you're thinking that way, just because I'm a certain color, I can't deal with you, you got problems. That's the word. I don't hate nobody. I love you just like Jesus loved me. That's what God is trying to tell you. Understand who you're talking to. If you know who you're walking with God is, then you're walking in the light. But if you're not walking in the light, you're walking in that darkness. Make sure we don't get caught up in this bad situation that this world is in right now. We need to be the light, showing that light, so we can love everybody like Jesus loves us. 
no matter what color or creed or who you are, male or female, it doesn't matter. We still love you. God loves you. God bless y'all. Amen. Anybody uh, need any prayer? Um, any family members going through anything? Let us pray for them. If not, we'll, we'll uh, close in prayer, then we'll pick up offering. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are. It's your word, never a man. We speak from you, not from a man. We love you so much, God, but you first loved us. So when you call on us, God, we're going to answer, and we're going to hear your call, and we're going to walk and tell it the way you told us to do it, Father God. For we know that wherever you are, that is holy ground. And where we are, we reverence who you are in that presence. We love you, God. Thank you for the head of this house, Pastor Chris, overseer of the house, Pastor Beverly, their wives, their husbands. Father, we thank you, God. Continue to bless them, God. They have a task at hand, God. And you said, Father, many are called. A few are chosen. We know we have chosen people here. And we thank you, Lord, for them and what you're doing through them. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in this building, this place. Thank you, because you're free course in the house. It's not our house. It's yours. Your will, your way. And we thank you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love you. God bless y'all.